Sam and I are both very pleased to be able to help a little in uh, introducing these three lectures which Hans Bader gave a few years ago on quantum mechanics. We are very happy because we were both two of Hans Bader's many young men and of a few women in the 1950s, and uh, we owe a lot to Hans. What you will find in those lectures is that quantum mechanics also owns a lot to Hans Bethe. And I want to give you a little bit of a preview of some of the things on timing which Hans will talk about in the first two lectures. The third lecture is sort of self-contained on slightly different topics. He will mostly, in the first lecture, talk about the old quantum theory, which was invented roughly between 1900 and 1915, and then say a little about a hiatus and confusion between 1915 and 24 or so, and then in the second lecture mostly, he will go on to talk of the new quantum theory, or quantum mechanics as it, uh, as it came to be called, which mostly took only four years, about 24 to 28, for the real inventors of the theory of quantum mechanics to give the basic postulates and theory. What Hans is too modest to go into much detail on is the lot of work which he himself had added uh, uh, to these postulates between 28 on the one hand and 1932 or 3 on the other. And uh, what he did in 32, 33 is an enormous amount of publishing two very important and influential uh, books, or at any rate, Handbuch articles, as they were called, all in German still at that time. One of them, nominally was Sommerfeld, but mostly him, on uh, solid state physics, and the other one on the hydrogen and helium atom, or at any rate, atoms with one and two electrons. One thing you will notice and might be slightly surprised at, that Hans talks a lot in all the three lectures on the hydrogen atom and the helium atom, which are not very important atoms on the Earth. That is because the, they are the two simplest atom there is, especially the hydrogen atom has only one single electron and is also the lightest atom of all, and helium, the next lightest, next simplest, with two electrons. He will emphasize hydrogen more in the first lecture, because that's something which the old quantum theory managed to explain pretty well. He'll then go on to helium, which was a complete disaster for the old quantum theory, but then got to be explained pretty well uh, in the new quantum mechanics. Let me put some of these remarks in context and tell you a little bit more about Hans and his teachers. Uh, as Hans mentions in the lecture, he comes to become a physicist just at about this time, 24, 25, 26, uh, as uh, the new quantum mechanics is being formulated, and finally, when he himself starts doing research, uh, the work of Heisenberg and Schrodinger has been formulated, and as he tells you, as graduate students, they have to make the presentations of Schrodinger's paper in the seminar of Sommerfeld. Sommerfeld was the outstanding teacher of all the young people who will formulate quantum mechanics. Uh, the names Pauli, Heisenberg are his outstanding students, and it's clear that after a year that Bede is in the seminar, he comes there in 25, by 1926 he's given a problem on electron diffraction because 
Mr. Germer, Davison and Germer had done a famous experiment on scattering electrons off uh, crystals. And it becomes clear to Sommerfeld that data is very good. And he tells him that. And this generates a self-confidence, which is one of the characteristics of Hans, that uh, he work. I mean, he has self-confidence in what he does. He can be wrong, and if I'm wrong, I will. Okay, so I was wrong, and I continue to the next problem. Uh, what Sommerfeld gives him and gave to all of his students is a mastery of mathematical techniques. Sommerfeld knew presumably all the mathematics, the good mathematics which was necessary to implement and to calculate quantum mechanics he was a master of. So when Hans leaves Sommerfeld, he has all of these tools at his disposal. And in 1930, as Hans tells you in the lecture, he goes off to Enrico Fermi in Rome and Enrico Fermi's characteristic is to be able to do back of envelope calculations of getting to the essence, to the simplicity of doing things. And Hans is uh, the amalgam, the combination of these two uh, methods of doing this, the thoroughness and the thoroughness on the one hand and the meticulousness that Sommerfeld would apply to solving a problem and the insightfulness and the simplicity that Fermi would want to, the way to understand the problem. Uh, we, I think it's worth emphasizing what you have said, that what will come through in these lectures is the modesty of Hans because he doesn't mention many of the things which he does, to which were in very, very important contributions to the development of quantum mechanics. One of them is, first of all, this problem of electron, of explaining the pattern that you see by scattering electrons of crystal. And this is one of the first applications of the quantum theory of scattering that Bohn had developed and that Hans mentions. But thereafter, he then applies lessons which he had learned from Wigner and Weil in applying group theory, namely the notion of symmetry. How do you make use of symmetry properties of system to simplify your calculation? And Beta's calculations and methods of doing things were very generative in all of solid state physics. Uh, he does the problem of the hydrogen negative ion methods of calculation. Uh, he goes on to does important things in ferromagnetism. Uh, and one of the characteristics of Hans is many of his solutions are considered in interesting at the time and turn out to be very important much later on when people really recognize all the things that he does. And these two articles uh, that you have mentioned, the Sommerfeld Beta and the Beta, and one should say Beta Sol Peter because you'll tell us hopefully a little bit more what happens to this 1933 article, Handbuch article, later on and gets revised after World War II that these define <clears throat> how do you use quantum mechanics uh, during the 30s. That's where people learn quantum mechanics from, how to apply, how to do calculations with quantum mechanics. And the essence, or at least the characteristic feature of beta is always how do you get numbers out, and as you mentioned, as simply as possible, uh, often using minimal things like slide rules and uh, hand calculations. Uh, one final thing one might mention uh, in terms of these lectures, they, Beta has the ability to make very difficult things look simple 
And it doesn't mean that at the end of the lectures you'll be able to make quantum mechanical calculation even though one thinks one can afterwards. Uh, but he certainly will give you an intimation of the power of quantum mechanics and hopefully that you will, one will read further about the importance because I believe Hans is right that it is the most important development in physics in the 20th century. Let me add one more thing about uh, uh, the timing. I told you that uh, Hans did a lot between 28 and 32, so that is 32, 33 article on the hydrogen and helium atom, you know, already contained uh, uh, a lot uh, that needed to be done for the atom. It took 25 years before a, essentially a translation of it appeared, this time in English, which Hans and I wrote together. And it's interesting that the most basic things Hans already had in that earlier article but of course, you know, we had added uh, a few more details in, in the meantime. I want to come back to something else about uh, debts you owe to your, your elders. You, most of us usually have had not just one, but often two uh, mentors of some kind. My own case, my PhD thesis advisor was Rudy Piles, a very similar uh, temperament to Hans Bethe. Uh, similar age, good friends, but of the two, Hans Bethe was the greater. And as Sam mentioned, similarly, Hans had two mentors, Sommerfeld and Fermi. And it's interesting that you owe a lot even to your academic grandparents. I think in both of our cases, much of our own scientific temperament has a little bit of Sommerfeld in it, and maybe even a little bit of family.